by transcription. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the great musical success, The Prince of Pilsen, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Nadine Connor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. <laughs> And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the lovely Metropolitan Opera soprano Nadine Connor and I will be singing of Heidelberg and lovely vacations in the south of France as we bring you the memorable, tuneful Prince of Pilsen. <laughs> Officially, the Prince of Pilsen. It was spring vacation in Heidelberg where I was attending the university. And I decided to spend the holiday in the south of France with some of my classmates. The scenery was so beautiful, we decided to get off the train at Grenoble and hike the rest of the way. But I didn't realize there was an American beer magnet on the train that the whole town of Nice mistook for the Prince of Pilsen. <laughs> Is the Prince of Pilsen here? Prince of Pilsen, that's me. Ah. Welcome to Nice. Welcome to your highness, the Prince of Pilsen. <laughs> I thank you. My daughter Nelly thanks you. The whole city of Cincinnati thanks you. <laughs> Were you ever in Cincinnati? Ah. No, your highness. Is it the seat of your kingdom? It is in the state of a ho-ho. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you ever in a ho-ho? Cincinnati <laughs> <laughs> oh, ho-ho. <laughs> no, your highness, I... But may I introduce myself? Why, have you never met yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I am Francois, owner of the most famous hotel in Nice. <laughs> but I would like you should meet my beautiful daughter, Nelly. Father, there's, Father, there's some awful mistake here. I didn't make it. Then in Rome, do like the Romans. But this is Nice. <laughs> then we do like the Venetian. <laughs> ah, princess, we are so happy to have you with us. Now tell us, is there anything we can do to make your visit more pleasant? Well, I know it's wrong for girls to flirt, except with old in love at first. I don't say so myself. <laughs> Give us a speech, your highness. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen and people, I can't speak now, but I would like to spoken 
because the fellow what writes my impromptu speeches, he ain't with me. Now comes time for the commercial. Drink Hans Wagner's Pilsner beer, the happiest hop in Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> what new am I in Cincinnati? Father, you've got to tell them you're not a prince. Don't explode your ignorance, Nelly. Remember, this is elsewhere. And over here, every time a man is out of a job, he's a prince. <laughs> Your Highness, the royal suite awaits you at my hotel. The royal suite? Oh, yes. How much does it cost, this royal suite? <laughs> to you, the price is nothing. That's a good price. <laughs> Come on, Nelly. Your father's got a head on him, like a glass of Pilsner. <laughs> Later on that day, all of us students, including me, the real Prince of Pilsen, marched up to that same hotel in Nice, and we were singing the old Heidelberg songs as we marched.
keeps going on here? Well, hello. It's about time you showed up. Oh, I am sorry, monsieur, but we have been so occupied welcoming the Prince of Pilsen. You mean the Prince of Pilsen is already here? We oui, and he is accompanied by his beautiful daughter. Well, I didn't know I had a daughter. Uh, what? Uh, beautiful, eh? Well, I hope she likes her father. <laughs> Manager, present my compliments to the Prince of Pilsen and ask him if you'll see, uh... Let's see, what'll I call myself? Uh, Herr Neiman. Well, you is his daughter. Ask her yourself. You are his daughter? Yes, monsieur. Speak. Just stand there. You're the loveliest girl I've ever seen. Why, monsieur? Those flowers you're carrying. Their scent fills the whole room. Violet, I've just picked them. They're my favorite flowers. Oh, the princess. The south of France is famous for its roses and its lilies. I know, but those flowers don't mean it so much to me as Violet did. for you, as they have had for me. Thank you. And now I must go. Goodbye. Goodbye. I arrived here and found I lost my name. Now I'm losing my heart. Violet, I wonder, does she mean these to bring a message to me? I sat on the balcony outside my room. I could see her across the courtyard. And through my smoke rings, the sight of her brought back two childhood memories. I know no greater pleasure mid the trials that hatch the day than to light a good Havana and to smoke my cares away. When I wrap myself in silence, not a discord comes to jar As my thoughts go flying backward Through the smoke of my cigar I seem to be a boy again My manly years have gone Once more I see my mother's face And hear
for disturbing you. Yes? You seem to understand foreign expressions better than I do. Well, perhaps. Uh, then come out here in the hall and listen to what the Prince of Pilsen is saying. I have just received a report from the Tomkov who is running my business in Cincinnati. And he is murdering me. What do you make of it? Well, someone is plotting to murder him. Oh, isn't that lovely? Huh? What publicity for the hotel? Wait a minute, where are you going? To tell the prince how happy I am. See you later. Stop. Monsieur, I wish to convey to you how happy we are that you have chosen our hotel in which to be assassinated. <laughs> Come again? <laughs> you will love getting shot here. Shot? Monsieur, what are you talking about? The assassination of the Prince of Pilsen. Ah, Your Highness, you must get a nice suntan while you can. You'll want to look healthy for your funeral. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to look healthy. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's healthy about a funeral? <laughs> Pardon, I have to get the photographers ready. Excuse me. Oh, they are going to shoot me. They are going to shoot the Prince of Pilsen. What am I shaking for? I'm not the prince of this. Oh, Father, I knew we'd get into trouble over this. If you are the assassination, I'll stay away. <laughs> Otherwise, come in. Hello. Hello, Herr Neiman. I brought you these violets, Princess. A funeral wreath. Oh. <laughs> They're lovely. Lovely. Very lovely. Do you find that they have a message for you, Herr Neiman? Yes. The same message as an old legend that I used to know. In days of long ago, the moonbeam loved the star. But how could he tell her so? So fair, but so So fair, but so far. Her twinkling wing. Was a love sign meant for him. So with heart beating light, he would sing all night. Mid woodland shadows dim. Sweetheart, I love you ever. Oh, doubt me never. Love lives forever. Favor for a citizen of Cincinnati. Gladly. Pretend 
that you are the Prince of Pilsen. Well, that should be easy, because I am the Prince of Pilsen. <gasps> prince of Pilsen? <laughs> Shake hands with the Prince of Pilsen. <laughs> I make the best beer in Cincinnati. Was you ever in Cincinnati? <laughs> Your Highness, I am so happy you are not dead yet. He is happy. Yes. <laughs> there is a telephone call for you from the United States. Oh, good. I'm going to take it here. Hmm? Hello? Yes? No? Yes! <laughs> oh. Who was that? The dumb cop who is running my business in Cincinnati is not such a dumb cop after all. I have made a killing. Uh, first he is going to be killed. Now he is making a killing. Why can't he make up his mind? Well, this calls for a celebration. By all means. Waiters, bellhops, manager, pilsner for everybody in the hotel. Uh, right away, miss. And a toast in the form of a question. What kind of a question, Your Highness? Was you ever in love with a girl from Cincinnati? <laughs> Pilsen with book and lyrics by Frank Pixley and music by Gustav Luders was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. And now, here again is lovely Nadine Conner. Thank you, Gordon. It was lots of fun pretending that you were a prince and I was a beer baroness. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was fun for all of us to have you aboard, Nadine. Uh, you know where I'm really from, though. No, I don't think I do. Well, was you ever in Syracuse? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's on the railroad hour next week, Gordon? One of our most requested musical comedies, Nadine. Jerome Kern's Unforgettable Sally. Oh, wonderful. And Marion Bell will be here to play the lovely dishwasher. Well, I'll be at my radio listening. Good night. Good night, Nadine. <laughs> All aboard. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so, until next week, goodbye. <laughs> The Prince of Pilsen was presented by arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae is currently starring in the Warner Brothers Technicolor musical hit, The Daughter of Rosie O'Grady. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. NBC. <laughs>